Today, we're gonna to be looking at the AMD Epic 7302. We're gonna be putting together a build with this. In a follow-up video, we're gonna be checking out the 7B12, and we're gonna be comparing the differences between them. Use the chapters at any point in time if you wanna skip around in here. So let's take a look at that. This is the Samsung PM9A3. What a chip. NVMe, this is gonna be sweet. In our Epic build here that we're about to get underway, this is the Epic 7302 and this is in our H12 SSLI PCIe4 motherboard here. This is going to be cooled off with our Noctuna Giganto, Super Giganto fan here, the SP3 version. We've got a thousand watt power supply, which should be more than enough. We have 512 gigabytes of RAM, and we've also got a 3080 Ti. This is gonna be a heck of a good build to go into this Fractal Define Meshify XL2. It's my first time putting together a fractal uh, anything, actually, so I'm really excited for it. There we go. Oh, yeah. All right, so let's make sure that this is going to fit in place here and that all the standoffs are in the right spot. All right, we're good. Let's get everything attached to the board. So we've got our NVMe here, and heat sink and right about there so we have some edge protruding out the front as well and there we go all right so I'll go ahead and get this one situated in here now we'll put in our RAM sticks Let's get the cooler installed here on this. Oh my god, it's huge. Not a cheap CPU cooler at all, but for SP3 socket, you kind of have to decide between a few different options. There's not tons and tons of variety out there. And at the end of the day, I thought this would be probably the best one that I could get for the use that I wanted. Let's take a look at what's inside the smaller box here. Given that this is a specialty socket type, I would definitely recommend you going ahead and taking some time and reading the recommendations that they have for you on everything related to this. Not having to do this again and go back and mess with it frequently is something that will prevent you from having any sort of injury to your socket. And the Epic sockets are known for being just kind of finicky about how tight they have to be before you damage the CPU. And so let's take a look at what these clearances might look like once we go ahead and install this. Okay, so as you can see here, these two are the wider space, these two are the narrower spaced. So this actually needs to be installed like this, but we're gonna relocate the fan over to this side. We're just going to go ahead and attach the heat sink first on here. But before that, we're going to go ahead and apply thermal paste. Now, they gave us some thermal paste, but I'm going to go ahead and just use the MX4 that I've got here. And so we need to apply the first pattern. One, two, three, four, five, six. Seven, eight, 
nine, and then four more that are larger. One, two, three. And take your time doing this part of the process. You wanna make sure that you get this as good as you can the first time, and definitely make sure that when you are tightening, you're using the specialty long Allen wrench with the little pivot point on it. And when you start finishing it off, make sure that you use the star pattern after a little while so that you can get a good uniform tightness and spread on that thermal paste. Instead of having it pushing air through here, I'm gonna have it pulling air up out of here. So I'm gonna to need to reverse these brackets. And for the 7302, I think a single CPU fan is gonna be fine. However, for the 7B12, we might try to. Okay, now on this side, I'm gonna check the clearances that I've got here. And it looks like we've got actually plenty of clearance room. I'm gonna tuck this back there. And make sure that when you are seating the fan onto the heat sink, that you go ahead and raise it up just a little bit more than you might typically so that you got good clearance with the RAM underneath it. And also, so the cable doesn't have to be in some crimpy position. Also make sure you have the airflow heading in the right direction. Go ahead and attach that there. Let's go ahead and get this mounted inside the case after we snap in the back plate adapter. One of the things that really stands out to me about the Fractal Meshify case that I'm using is just the precision and quality of the alignment of almost every single thing in here. When I went ahead and seated this in, it just literally fit like a glove, like perfect. And the alignment on everything, including the uh, PCIe risers, is just so spot on. You can tell a lot of craftsmanship went into the making and engineering of this, so I would seriously recommend considering this case. So I was excited to actually get to toss in some really high performance SAS SSDs into here. However, unfortunately, I didn't pay attention to the cables that came with it. These are SATA Ford breakout cables. I need SAS Ford breakout cables, different things. So I'm gonna have to order some cables to get these to work, but in the meantime, we're gonna attach eight of our Samsung one terabyte and that'll be a lot of performance. I'm actually gonna to try to center this a little bit more so that it helps pull the air out coming off of the Noctuna. That looks good. All right, let's get the power supply in. I will be spending some more time in the future getting the cabling better and also adjusting some of the fans and the curves. All right, this is a little bit older, but this should be plenty enough for what we've got going on for this system. RM1000X 1000 watt Corsair power supply. And I have been using this PSU now for a while on both the 7302 and the 7B12 CPU. And even with two GPUs, I haven't ran into any problems yet. However, I'm not using huge wattage on my GPUs for certain. If you were using something like a 4090 or a 3090, you would definitely want to have a much larger power supply than a 1000 watt. Since I moved out of desktop systems, I kind of just left all this stuff sitting around. So luckily I just had this. I didn't have to buy anything for it. What kind of power supplies are you using for your Threadripper or Epic systems is a great question. And we need currently two eight pins for this. So just one of these will be able to power that. All right, so we've got everything connected up that we need for right now. So let's get this spaghetti of cables jammed in there. And while a lot of people will show you every single cable that they put in, I'm instead just gonna do this. And while it's not necessarily the most beautiful job of cabling in the world, it definitely will have a lot of performance behind it. We've got our SSDs cabled up over here. 
We also have our NVMe in. We're gonna toss in the 3080 Ti. And this case is just so well thought out as far as everything on it. Really great filtering, really great snaps, really great locations for everything. So let's get the 3080 Ti into place here and get it cabled up. Pretty good GPU. I do have two A5000s that we'll be using also in some additional testing coming up shortly. And I also like to have just a little bit of extra performance on the networking side. So we're gonna slide in a Mellanox Connect X2, SFP Plus, 10 gigabit per second card, and a little bit more storage here. We've got some Intel 900Ps. These are 480 gigs each. Amazing Q1 depth performance for anything that you might be after. Finishing up some of the cabling here, and we are getting so close to this getting done. Really, really do like it. Let me know what your thoughts are if you are interested in using an Epic system for your daily driver. I've got some interesting things that will be in the finding video for sure, so make sure you hit like and subscribe, and tune in so that you get notified when we get to those parts as well. So there we have the AMD EPIC 7302 build guide. I hope you have hit like and subscribe down below here because this will allow you to follow along when we roll out the 7B12 video soon. And by that time I should give a really good amount of feedback on what it feels like as far as using an AMD EPIC as a daily driver on each one of these systems. Do check the links below if you're interested in any of these things and I will see you guys next time.